Hello and welcome back to my channel, Disney Jaws Mac 1965. Thank you very much for following along with my um, British Isles Disney Dream Cruise vlogs. Um, I'm going to now answer some questions or hopefully answer some questions that I've had about um, disability and um, getting on and off cruise ships, uh, on and off at the ports and also the accommodation. So this will be a short series of three vlogs. Um, the first one concentrating on getting on and off the ship <clears throat> and staying at Southampton, so going from Southampton. The second one will concentrate on the accommodation and the boat itself. And the third one will concentrate on ports and getting on and off. I hope they're of, of use because I do get a lot of questions from people asking all about um, disability and going on Disney cruises in a wheelchair. So I'm hoping this might answer some questions. If it doesn't answer your question, please don't hesitate to contact me on Instagram, direct messaging, um, on Facebook, direct messaging on Instagram, and uh, just pop a question on down below here and I will answer. So let's start off then. We went to Southampton, um, this was on the 9th of September, and we stayed at a Premier Inn. The Premier Inn was at Rosse, which was just outside um, the sort of Southampton, um, one of the areas of there. It wasn't good. It really wasn't good at all. Premier Inn have stopped doing good things for disabled people. Um, they used to be one of the best, cheapest places to stay before you started your holiday off you would at least get a good adaptive bathroom and you get a good comfortable bed. They've changed the beds. The beds have gone from being high up, easy to slide across um, and um, transfer into. And now I've just gone into these really low beds that are very flimsy um, and are not, not comfortable at all. Um, I didn't get a good night's sleep and Mick certainly didn't get a good night's sleep. Um, th th it was just too uncomfortable. So the other problem with that Premier Inn was that it was tiny. I didn't take any photos, I'm sorry, but it was very, very tiny. Um, I couldn't even get into the breakfast room. Um, so poor Mick had to go and get my breakfast and bring it to me. Um, which, you know, if I hadn't had a carer with me, and he's my husband, not my carer really, but if I hadn't had Mick with me, I would have been really struggling. Because um, I don't think anybody would have helped me out. Well, there wasn't really anybody around to help, to be fair. So that was not the best start, but we have to go down and stay in Southampton the night before because it's a four and a half hour drive from here and we'd have to leave very early in the morning um, which isn't good so we got down to Southampton and um, it was a long old drive but we were very pleasantly surprised um, when we got there because um, we were going in the QE2 terminal and it was so much so much easier than we thought it would be. Um, when we went on the Magic, we'd gone from Newcastle, which wasn't the best of ports. Um, and last year we went from Dover, which was amazing. Um, and we had no problems whatsoever. It, it was fantastic. Um, but Southampton was new to us. Um, so we wanted to get there reasonably early and we were very lucky because being a concierge, you have a very early port arrival time, a pat time. So we um, pulled up to the um, terminal building and I'll insert a couple of photos now.
Once we got into the terminal building, um, Mick was able to drive the car um, under the cover area and um, drop me off there. So I'll, and we were able to drop our cases off as well. It was really good because he was dry while he was getting my wheelchair out from the back, which we use with a hoist. Um, and he then has to just assemble a couple of bits, put the batteries in, and then I'm ready to go. Um, and um, <clears throat> he was able to do that undercover, which was good. And then he drove off to meet um, Portside Parking. Now I'm you saying Portside Parking because that's who we used. They were a Valley Parking firm, which were really, really good. Um, we didn't have to go on a bus or any of those things. And I'll explain a little bit more about why we chose them in a minute. So, we didn't use Disney parking for our car. It was recommended that you use ABP and they, for some reason, decided they were going to bus us from their car park to the um, port building, to the QE2 terminal. I can't get on a bus with my wheelchair. Buses are very tight. The turn to get on and off um, with the ramp is, is far too tight for my wheelchair and it, quite frankly it's embarrassing. Um, we tried it at Newcastle when we got on at Newcastle to get on the Magic for the staycation oh, and it was so difficult and poor Mick had to help and put my chair into manual and, and, and I'm big, he shouldn't be having to do that. He shouldn't be having to um, alter me about. Um, I should be able to do it myself. And there is not enough room on these buses or any any bus unless you um, are on a proper adapted bus, um, which I do know there are um, some, but they never have them at the ports. So we wanted to avoid going on a bus and being bussed at any point. So we decided to look for another far parking firm. We did. Uh, we found Southampton Valley Parking Service. It turned out they were a bit of a scam. Um, they were leaving your car unattended in the most public of places and people were finding large mileage on their cars so we got out of that one very quick and um, very very glad for the people that um, exposed them on Facebook. Um, I did get most of my money back and because we were on Visa we could have got the money back anyway and um, we paid by Visa. So we then found Portside Parking. I actually rang the um, managing director of the firm, spoke to him. He was amazing and he even rang me back to reassure me. Portside Parking at Southampton, if you want Valley Parking, you're disabled, absolute thumbs up, brilliant. We will be booking them for um, 2024 when we go um, on our Western Europe Disney Dream Cruise. So, next stage was getting on to the boat. Um, really glad that um, we were in concierge because we were the first to get on the, uh, be able to go through the terminal. Security was fine. All the booking in areas were fine. Lots and lots of room. Um, and the lift, I have to say, was superb um, to get in. Lots of room. Um, and uh, very happy with that. The next video um, I'm going to drop in is um, of the um, air bridge. Now, it's great to have an air bridge. We had air bridges at um, Dover. We didn't have them in Newcastle um, and it wasn't good getting on and off the ship. At, Dover, it was brilliant, really good air bridges and not, and there wasn't um, big 
um, joining, um, uh, I don't know what you call them, um, lumps in the gang in the, on the air bridge. There was at Southampton, so I'm going to insert a video now to show you what those um, air bridge lumps were like and actually getting onto the ship. All right, okay. Yeah, that's fine. Hello. <laughs> My God, I have to move my hand. Thank you. You're okay. Thank you. Thank you. No, you'll be alright, it's quite big. I think it's alright. We've got some big maybe poor uh, sort of Oh, I got, I got stuff in here because he, you know, he okay. bumps himself and he bleeds. Yeah, I'll have to piss off the way. Let me get out of your Oh, we're going to stick with our friends if that's all right. Yeah, thank you. It's raining. It's good to say bridges again, so. Yeah. 
So as you can see from my video, those um, air bridge joining um, lumps were a bit of a test. So if you're in um, a, a manual wheelchair or, or even an electric wheelchair like mine, um, you need to go at them slow. Um, otherwise you'll go flying off the other end or you could even worse tip out of your wheelchair. So you just need to be careful with that. But it's, it was fine. There was not many people there. Um, as I say, with us being a concierge, um, nobody was going to get hurt um, from me uh, popping over these um, raised lumps in the air bridge. Um, and um, I was very glad that we were in concierge because the queues, while we were sat having our concierge lunch, of people on that air bridge were huge they, they were packed as people were trying to get on the ship so very very grateful for that early get on um it was really good i didn't film getting off the ship um at the end of the cruise um again we went on the air bridge so it was the same problem um with those um raised um uh, joins now, um, the good thing is, again, we were able to get off the ship before anybody else because we were in concierge. You go and have your breakfast in concierge that morning. Um, you basically don't have, um, go and have your timed breakfast in the restaurants that is suggested to you. And you go and have a light breakfast in concierge and they override the lifts and they take you down and get you off that ship before anybody else. Um, so we were back with our car, um, so it was a reverse process, in the um, uh, pull-in place. Mick went to fetch the car, left me there, um, then was able to put my car, my um, break down my wheelchair, put it in the car and we were able to drive off. We were on our way back to Lincoln um, by 8.15 in the morning and uh, people were just starting to spill off. So it was a really good, um, good, good thing um, and a real bonus of concierge. Um, so with that. So that's the end of part one um, of this series of vlogs. The second vlog coming up um, will be published later on this week and it is going to feature um, our sweets so I will feature both the sweets on the magic and um, those that one um, on the dream um, so you can have a look and see what it's like in concierge on both those ships Thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe um, to be able to follow on um, for more dis disability content, but equally more just general content about Disney cruises and Disneyland Paris. Thank you.